Hello and welcome to a Vector Tuts Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham. I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to make a wireframe globe using Illustrator's 3D effects. First step is to get a map. Um, I'm not going to show you how to draw a map, but there are lots of places on the web to find vector maps. And for this effect to look really good, an equa rectangular projection is best, but any world map will do. Next, we're going to draw a grid, and you can double click on the rectangular grid tool to bring up its options. I know that my map is roughly twice as wide as it is high, so I've put in 12 horizontal dividers and 20 vertical. You could of course measure the maps and calculate the size, but eyeballing it is okay as well. What we want is grid sections that are more or less square. Then just click and drag out a grid over your map. I'm going to change the strokes to gray and make them half a point wide, and then send the grid to the back behind the map. Before we can apply the map to a 3D object, we have to turn it into a symbol, and you can do that by dragging the artwork into the Symbols panel, or clicking the New icon at the bottom of the panel. Just give the symbol a name if you want, and you need not pay attention to any of the other stuff in the Options box, just click OK. Now that the artwork is stored as a symbol, you can delete this, or just move it out of the way. To create the sphere, first draw a perfect circle with the Ellipse tool. I'm holding down the Shift key to constrain it to a perfect circle, and the Option key to draw it from the center. The color doesn't matter, I'll make it red so you can see it better, and we just need one half of the circle, so select this point with the Direct Selection tool, and press Delete. Select the semicircle and go to Effect 3D Revolve. Click the Preview button, and you'll see the sphere. At the bottom of the dialog box are the shading options, and if you don't see those, click the More Options button, where you can adjust the lighting. However, that's not really important to us just yet. Now click the Map Art button. Choose your symbol from the drop-down menu, then click Scale to Fit. This will take some processing power from your computer, so be patient. Uh, we don't want to see the sphere itself, just the symbol artwork, so click Invisible Geometry, then click Shade Artwork. Now you can go back to the Revolve options and adjust the lighting, and change the rotation of the sphere to reveal different parts of the globe. Now, some people may be wondering why I didn't just use the wireframe setting in the 3D surface options. You can certainly use that, and it makes a perfectly fine wireframe. However, when you go to map your artwork to it, and I've created a symbol without the grid lines here, the artwork is in wireframe mode as well, so you won't be able to color it or adjust the lighting. Making your own grid and mapping it to the sphere gives you more flexibility. Once you understand the basic 3D mapping process, you can make several different views of the globe, then expand their appearance and put some finishing touches on them for a world of possibilities.